The Omicron variant of the SARS-CoV-2 virus is here in India and is currently causing the fourth wave across the world. Although the data on how deadly it can be is still emerging, experts more or less are of the opinion that the variant, although more infectious than Delta, may actually be less lethal. But why would a virus evolve to be less deadly? The theory of evolution put forth by Charles Darwin gave us the phrase, survival of the fittest. That is, an organism will evolve over time to become a better version of itself. So ideally, newer variants of a virus should become more lethal. But in nature, we very often observe that virus over time evolves to become less deadly. In this video, I talk about this law of declining virulence that dates back to 1800s, examples of viruses that have become less deadly over time and whether we can expect the same from the SARS-CoV-2 virus. I am Mohana Basu and this is Pure Science. Before going into whether or not viruses can evolve to become less virulent, let us go over the basics of what genetic evolution in viruses means and how variants arise. Every living organism is run by a predefined set of genes that instruct cells how to build proteins. Understanding the sequence of genes is thus like cracking the code to the organism and how it functions. The genetic material of the coronavirus is ribonucleic acid or RNA strands. Each virus has about 26,000 to 32,000 bases of RNA letters in its length. These letters A, C, U and G stand for adenine, cytosine, uracil and guanine which are nitrogen containing biological molecules that are the fundamental units of the genetic code. How A, C, U and G are arranged in the genetic code determines what proteins are expressed by the organism. When a virus multiplies inside the cells of a living organism, it creates copies of the RNA. However, the process it uses to make these copies is not perfect and often introduces tiny errors in the sequence of bases. These errors are called genetic mutations. Not every mutation necessarily causes changes in the protein structure of the virus. Sometimes these typos make no difference in how the code is read and what the protein is expressed as a result. But then over time, accumulating typos lead to a change in the protein, which is when the function of a virus either becomes better or worse. If the change in the virus makes it less fit, it will die out. Naturally, the fittest viral variants are expected to continue to propagate. In the late 1800s, uh, American scientist Theobald Smith proposed the law of declining virulence. What Smith said was pathogens such as viruses become less virulent over time as they evolve to do less harm to their host. This is because if all the viruses did was to kill its host, how will it infect new hosts? So the theory was that the variants which replicate well and cause disease will continue to survive in the long term while the variants that cause severe disease or death effectively end up eliminating themselves. This has already been observed in some previous viruses. The H1N1 influenza viruses responsible for the 1918 Spanish flu and 2009 swine flu pandemics are some examples. OC43, a human coronavirus that causes the common cold, is also believed to have started out as a more deadly coronavirus, which may have been responsible for a pandemic that began in 1890, which killed more than a million people worldwide. But will the SARS-CoV-2 virus also head the same way? And is Omicron an indicator of that? Not necessarily. And here's why. SARS-CoV-2 is highly transmissible and between infection and death, there is plenty of time for the virus to spread. In 1970s, Australian scientists Roy Anderson and Robert May developed this line of thinking, calling it the trade-off model. When the time between infection and death is relatively long, the ultimate death of the host will not matter to the virus since it will have had sufficient time to replicate and transmit to many others. The, this trade-off model is now widely accepted. There is no general evolutionary law for predicting how relationships between hosts and pathogens will pan out for a virus. 
The emergence of a seemingly less deadly Omicron variant gave rise to the speculations that the virus may have entered the stage where, like many other viruses, it has begun to become less deadly. However, it may still be too early to say that. We still need to understand whether the low death rate in South Africa's Omicron wave was an exception. We also need to understand that even if the variant causes mild disease, it has a high rate of transmission. This means that a large number of people can get infected, overwhelm hospitals and healthcare systems, which would mean that even those who could have been saved under normal circumstances may end up losing their lives due to the lack of proper care. Viruses becoming less deadly over time is not inevitable and may not be what ends the pandemic. From past experience, we know that pandemics end by a large section of the population becoming immune to the virus. This can ultimately be achieved by vaccines. Compared to the influenza viruses, coronaviruses are actually mutating more slowly, which means that it is less likely to be able to evolve to completely bypass vaccine efficacy. Regular boosters are not because the virus is evolving rapidly, but because the current vaccine-induced immunity is not as long-lasting as we had hoped. Eventually, it is possible that COVID will become endemic. That is, some version of the virus will continue to circulate, causing occasional outbreaks among the unvaccinated people. But as long as we are in the pandemic, well-fitted masks, ventilating, closed spaces and getting vaccinated are the best way to keep oneself protected. This is Mohana Basu, Special Correspondent at The Print. If you like our work, do consider paying for a subscription to The Print. You can do so through the link in the description box below.